Okay, today, boys and girls, we are going to be reviewing um, Central Idea, okay? Um, and the Central Idea is what the text is mostly about. Um, and in order to find the Central Idea of a text, we look for text clues. And we've talked about those different types of clues before. There's the headings, your visuals, that means your pictures, your graphs, your charts. Um, you want to look at clues in the first and last sentence. You want to look for repeated words. And we know that when an author repeats words over and over, that it means that it's something that they really want us as readers to um, take note of, okay? Um, and when we're finding the central idea, we also are looking to evaluate the details, right? And there are different types of details that we've talked about before, the examples, facts, evidence, description, and we use these keys to open the door. We identify the central idea using the text clues, as I just said, and we evaluate those details to determine the key idea that supports the central idea, okay? And another thing I just wanted to mention, uh, we've talked about this before, um, that sometimes a central idea is stated directly the author is generous enough to get to just come right out and tell us what it is. And other times, we as readers, we have to infer or figure it out, right, for ourselves. And so we use the text clues and the supporting details to help us infer what the central idea is about for the text, okay? Um, the authors are going to include those details and other evidence to help support that central idea, okay? Um, now, we are going to be looking for central ideas and supporting evidence as we read an informational text today called Nature Preserves. Okay, our short read today is The Protective Power of Nature Preserves, okay? And so, again, our purpose, <coughs> excuse me, today um, with this genre, which is informational text, is um, going to be to learn facts, right, about the topic of nature preserves. And we are going to read to learn more about nature preserves by looking for the central idea and evidence that we can find in this short read for today. Okay? Now, our overall um, essential question um, is, how can caring for the earth and its living things improve life now and in the future? Okay, so we want to read for two things. We want to see if this particular text is going to give us an answer to our essential question of how can caring for the earth and all of the living things here improve life for us now and for us in the future. And then we also want to be looking for those text clues, the headings, the visuals, the um, first and last sentence, any repeated words. We want to look for those text clues and any supporting details such as facts, evidence, um, statistics, um, descriptions or examples, right, that can kind of help guide us into what the central idea is about this text, right, what the text is mostly about. So what Ms. Johnson is going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and read this particular short text, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for those students that may not be here today and you guys are going to be um, reading along with me okay and so again just to review I want you to set your purpose and your focus on what is the central idea of the text what details do the authors use to support the central idea and we may even take it a little step further once we finish and you are going to get to tell me possibly if you agree with the author's central idea, right? Based on any supporting details. And then tell me why, why not, okay? So let's read. The protective power of nature preserves. All over the world, humans' actions 
imperil nature, natural, I'm sorry, areas in the plants and animals in them. As human populations grow, people put the environment at risk by using up natural resources such as trees, water, and land. As people cut trees and build roads, houses, and businesses, natural landscapes disappear, okay? Plants and animals' homes disappear too. However, there's a way to protect endangered species and natural areas, and it's called a nature preserve. Now, I want to stop right there and just remind you of the feature that you have here in your textbook. You can highlight the word, and you will get a short little dictionary entry. If you need the word um, pronounced for you, you can click here, and the program inside of your HMH book will pronounce the word as well, okay? So, <clears throat> the next subheading is a protected place for plants and animals. A nature preserve is sometimes called a reserve or a park. It is a place that is protected from harmful human development. Plants are free to thrive as they naturally would and animals are free to roam. Natural features such as rock formations and bodies of water are protected from damage. Within this carefully managed area, plant and animal populations can hold steady or even grow. So at this point as a reader, I will probably stop and ask myself, okay, what did I just read? And if you're able to kind of give a brief little quick blurb about what you've read, then you're on the right track. But if you're sitting and you're thinking, eh, I don't remember what I read. What do we do? As good readers, we go back and we reread, right? And so as we move through, you're still using your hashtag legit. <clears throat> You can be thinking about it and tracking what you believe the main idea is in each paragraph. As you see, they've already numbered the paragraphs for us, okay? So let's look here at paragraph number three. Governments or private groups protect nature preserves by limiting or controlling human visitors' actions. Hunting, fishing, hiking, and camping may be allowed in some preserves. In others, these activities are prohibited. So what we've just read is about nature preserves being a protected place for plants and animals. Okay, let's look at the very next section, how nature preserves are created. So by looking at this particular subheading, I as a reader am going to be thinking, I'm probably going to learn how these preserves or these protected areas are created created. Nature preserves have been established in many different countries. The first step towards protecting an area comes when an individual or group recognizes it as a risk. These people work to purchase the land or to convince the land owners or the government to protect it. One way in which the U.S. government can protect a natural area is by making it a national park. Yellowstone National Park, which I'm sure several of you have probably heard of this before, was formed in 1872. <clears throat> it was the first nature preserve created as a U.S. national park. Yellowstone includes land that is part of the states of Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. It is home to bison, wolves, and other species that need protection. It is also home to natural features such as its famous hot springs. The U.S. government protects Yellowstone's plants, animals, and habitats from human destruction. So as I'm reading, I again want to stop and think about what details am I learning in each section. And I'm tying it all back to the title, The Protective Power of nature preserves. I've read about it being a protected place for plants and animals. I've learned about how they're created. And now I'm going to be reading finally about why the preserves are even important to people. Nature preserves provide important benefits for people as well as for the plants and animals that live there. A preserves trees produce oxygen for us to breathe. 
Wetlands help control floods by storing water. They strain out pollutants that contaminate human water systems too. Contaminate means when something has been added that is a harmful substance, okay? So as I'm reading here, I've already learned why it's important. It helps us breathe. It gives us oxygen. The wetlands help control floods by storing the water. They strain out the pollutants that contaminate human water systems too. So the preserves are a benefit for us. These are the ways that they help us. Paragraph 7, nature preserves also provide scientific and recreational opportunities. In Costa Rica, the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve draws scientists to study its incredibly varied plant and animal life. The reserve also brings tourists from all directions. People visit the forest to hike its trails, glide through the treetops on zip lines, and view more than 500 species of animals. Other preserves provide quieter pleasures. A city preserve might offer the chance to escape car horns and sidewalks for bird song and dirt paths. In a nature preserves, people use natural resources in benevolent rather than harmful ways. The word benevolent means something that is kind, either a person or a thing. So what this is telling us is that the nature preserves, people use them in a kind way rather than in a harmful way. So by protecting the plants, animals, and landscapes, we are protecting nature's balance, which is good for all of us. So as a reader, now that I've read these three subsections and I've read this text about the protective power of nature preserves, I want to go back. And I want to ask myself, okay, what is it that the author believes, right? And so just from looking at the title, I can infer that the author believes that nature preserves should be protective and that they have a lot of power, that they're special. Everything that this author has talked about has been positive when it comes to nature preserves. And so, once I've done that, I want to look at the details, right? And then I want to use those details to help me identify the central idea of the text. And so what we're going to do, we are going to go back and we are going to reread together, okay? And we are going to break down each one of these paragraphs, right? And look at those details, and we are going to come up with just a quick little blurb as to what that particular paragraph is about. And then once we do that, we're going to look at all eight of our blurbs, and then we're going to add those up, kind of like in math. We're going to add them up, and we're going to come up with a central idea that we believe the author is trying to persuade us to believe about nature preserves, okay? So what I want right now, I want everyone to go ahead and log into Rapid ID, and I want you to click my friend Ed, and you guys are going to be going back through, and we are going to practice again today how to annotate within our text, and we are going to be tracking the main idea or the little blurb out to the side of each paragraph, okay? This is going to be text number one of a paired text that we are going to be using. Our text for tomorrow is going to be potatoes on rooftops, okay? So I will see you guys on the other side, ready to ask and answer questions before, during, and after.